me walk you through these steps of adding uh, Google authentication to your login. So you can log in using a Google account. First of all, we want to come to this site right here, console.cloud.google.com slash APIs. If this is the first time you're in here, it should be looking like this. And there might be a prompt to accept some terms or whatever. Just accept that and we'll come here. And first of all, we need to create a project. So let's go ahead and do that. The name can be whatever you want it to be. I'm just going to name it Bookstore. And I don't have any organization. So I'll just create. So our project is created. Then you want to go to this OAuth consent screen. Just click here. And you want to use a external user type. And you want to create. Uh, so in here, we just need to add a name. Call it bookstore again. And the support email is the one I'm currently using. And you also need an email here. And we'll go ahead and save that. And these next two, you can just save and continue. Scopes and test users. And then you get to the summary page. You can just click back to dashboard. Then we need to go to the credentials and add some new credentials. So we select create credentials and OAuth client ID. So the application type will be a web application. Once again, I'm just going to name it bookstore. And down here in the authorized URIs, I will add HTTPS with the local host and the port of 5001, which is our HTTPS port, uh, which you can see in here. So we're using the 5001 for the HTTPS. And just append sign in dash Google. And then we can create. And then you will receive your client ID and your client secret. And these two we're going to add to our secrets in our project. I just went ahead and downloaded my secrets as a JSON file. So I have it on my computer. And now we can go ahead and work on our project and the first thing we want to do is that we want to go into the nuget package manager and we want to install the package called let's see authentication.google this one right here so i'm just gonna I believe I'm using the 0.12 versions. So I'll go ahead and download that. Okay, so now we have that. And now I want to go ahead and initialize a secret store in my project. So what I can do then is I'll type .NET user-secrets init. And we'll see that it was set to this right here for my project. And if you go into our project file here, we'll see that it's been added in here within a user secrets ID tag. And you see that it's the same number here and here. So what we want to do now is just type, uh, we can add it via text or via the console, or we can go to right click and we can go to manage user secrets. Then we can also manage our secrets in here. I'm just gonna show you how you can do it from the console now, and then I'll show you the secrets afterwards. So if you go ahead and type 
dotnet user secrets and then we want to set and we call this one authentication let's see authentication google client id and the value for this one will be our client id from the secrets so i have mine right here i'm just going to paste it in and then i press enter and then we see it's been successfully saved to this and then we do the same but this time we want the uh, client secret and i'll just copy this one again paste it here this is my secret client secret and i'll add it like that and now if you go here to the user secrets you see that it's been added like this so this is one way you can do it as well you just paste this in here instead of adding it like this but you do as you please the next step is to go to our startup file and here we want to add i'm just going to copy paste this and i'll leave the link uh, to this page in the description down below so i will just paste this in here and we can just format it a bit so let's see is this one not working um okay for some reason it hasn't included the nuget package i just installed a minute ago so we have to install it again let's see now yep now we have the installed all right and it's in here as well perfect and we can also see that this one works right now and uh, let's see if we can just format this didn't want to. I'm gonna have to do it like this. There we go. Looks a bit better. So this is the one, the section you want to add here. It will just basically tell it where we've stored our secrets. Uh, you could just uh, manually put input these right here, but then they're not very secret. So that's why we're using this secrets method. Uh, just before we run this, I see that there's an error in my code here. I'm missing a piece. I uh, don't know if that got lost uh, because I missed a GitHub push or something, but if I removed it, uh, we should have this uh, anyway. The sign in require confirmed account equals to true. So we want this to um, require a confirmed account to be able to log in and if i run this program now you can see how it looks so here we are we can go to register use another service to register and i want to use google and here you can see that i named my app bookstore so that's bookstore and i want to use this account here you can see you've successfully authenticated with google and then the email address of your Google account is automatically added in here. So now if I click register, it will give me the prompt to send me here to confirm my mail. I will just do that. All right, just confirm my mail. Now I can log in and I want to use Google again. And I want to use this account. And there we go, we're logged in. So the problem now is that um, while we use this, I don't get these settings here or these properties right here. And the reason because that is, is that I have not, let me just stop this. Uh, in my model, I have not put the required attribute in here. Uh, the required attribute, attribute is currently only on the uh, within the identity pages. So if I go to, for example, uh, the register form, you can see in the input model here that I have the required attributes. And 
this is something I probably missed uh, because I think you usually want to have it in your model as well so that it's so that you can't like input empty uh, models here or um, empty users here um, if you always want these to be filled in so now it accepts our user anyway and of course we can use if I go to run this again We can just go into our profile and add these now after here. Now I have to fill in them all, I think. And if I save this now, and now I have a complete profile. Um, if you want to do this while someone registers, so if I just go ahead and delete my user again real quick. So I just deleted my user again, and if I go to register now, I'm gonna use this one again. And in here, uh, if you put required, uh, I can actually go ahead and do that. I just have to stop this one then. So if I put a required, attribute in here on all of these and let's run it again and now I try to register this account and now when I register we'll get this error because the model can't handle nulls so this means that I would have to add validation and also all the fields required for uh, registering. So if I go back here, click on this one. And do this again. Okay, so now it's all messed up, so I have to just delete the user again. But if you'd like to add all these uh, input fields, then all you need to do is come to the um, let's see here, the external login, I believe it is. And here in the input model, we need to pass in all the fields that we want to enter. And we can just copy this one actually from the register because in here we're doing the exact same thing. So you can see here, I've already input this. And uh, the password we don't need because we use in a Google Authentication instead, but I'll just copy all these and let's paste them in here. We can do like this and just like that. I think, yes. And then we also need to come down here and look for this default user. And then we need to add the values we just input. Last name, address, zip code, city. And there we go. So now we have these in both the models. And if we just scroll down, little bit more or let's see where it is maybe it's up here ah here it is so in in here we can pass values to the input model uh, without having to type it so right here we're passing the email from our um, google account directly into our uh, input field and we can do the same actually with uh, our name so what we could do is we can come here and we can say var name names maybe and we'll do a in uh, we just copy this one but instead of the email I want to get the name and I also want to split the name on a space. And then we just 
add a semicolon and then this will be an array of names. So first name and last name. So let's see here. We can just do first name equals to names dot zero and last name equals to names of one. So that will give us the, so the first name in the split is the first name and the second name in the split is the last name. And now all we have to do is add this to the um, view as well, to the page. And we can just copy this one again from the register. And uh, let's see, we only need these ones. Let's see, we have the external login right here. And we can just paste these. Okay. So let's try to run again. Go to register, use Google, same account. And now you can see here, I've got my na first name, my last name, and also my email already pre-filled. So all I need to do now is fill in my address, uh, zip code and city. And this should be validated. Yeah, exactly. So we can't uh, even continue now before we add these. So home street, four, five, whatever. Some zip code in the big city. So register. Now it all works fine again. I want to go and confirm my email. There, I just confirmed it. And we go to log in. And here we go. Look at that. So that's one way you can add uh, Google authentication for your website. And not very hard either. So hopefully you get some use for this. And if you want me to look into anything specific and do a video on, just uh, let me know in a comment or just uh, tell me in person and I'll look into it. So I'll see you the next time.